even though a jury found her guilty of this terrible crime. DeFries continues to insist she's innocent. And now, for the first time since her conviction, she's sitting down to tell us her side of the story. North of 911, where's your emergency? My stepdaughter fell down the stairs. Terrifying. She's still unconscious? Yes. Yeah, I don't know if she's breathing anymore. Heart wrenching. <laughs> These are the last moments of a little girl's life. A toddler less than two years old found bruised and battered at the bottom of a 13 foot staircase. An accident or a hidden rage that led to homicide. A jury hears the heartbreaking evidence and puts her father's fiance behind bars. But did they get it right? I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to get the truth out. This sweet little baby is Annabelle. Go, Anna. Go, Anna. 20 months old, just learning to talk. <laughs> just learning to walk. No one could ever guess that her life would be cut so short. Anna's mom, Heather, and her dad, Brandon Bell, are both Navy, stationed in Norfolk, Virginia. They're divorced, sharing custody of Anna and her eight-year-old sister. But Brandon's tour of duty as a single dad would end when he falls for Emily DeFreeze, ex-Navy, single mother whom he meets online. They seem to be made for each other. I saw his profile and saw that he had children. He was in the military, so he would completely understand my lifestyle of staying at home a lot, going to the park, doing stuff with the kids. Within a few months, Emily and her son Carrick move in with Brandon and his daughters. It was a great fit right from the start. His children and my son seemed to mesh perfectly. Be gentle, be nice. It actually took some pressure off me. I wasn't the playmate anymore, so it, it actually made things a little bit easier to have them play with each other. But not everyone was thrilled with the new arrangements. Before I had even met Brandon's children, he had kind of warned me that his older daughter would have explosive tantrums. She would lash out. There were times when it turned towards me and she physically had slammed me into a wall before because she was big enough to move me. Despite the concerns, Brandon moves forward with his plans for a new family. At a Navy party on Saturday, May 17th, he makes a surprise announcement. He took the mic and called me up and proposed to me. So this was a happy occasion? Very much. But not for Anna's older sister. She made it very clear in the car ride home that she was not happy about us getting engaged. I tried to, to speak with her and let her know that Carrick and I coming into her family was not going to push her out, that her dad still loved her just as much as he always had. But the afterglow of the engagement wouldn't last even a day. The next morning, Brandon leaves early for work. Emily is alone with the three children. We didn't have anywhere to go. We had no, no pressures on us that morning. It seemed like things had been going fairly smoothly. Text messages between Emily and Brandon show everything's under control at home. She writes, got the kids watching Curious George and I'm doing my unemployment claim. Brandon responds, good, Curious George is a kid magnet. Late in the day, Emily tends to her toddler son and Anna's eight-year-old sister in the backyard. Emily texts Brandon saying Anna was taking an extended afternoon nap upstairs. How long had she been sleeping at that point? I'm not sure. I don't know exactly what time she went down. At 5.30 p.m., Emily says she went inside to check on Anna and came face to face with every parent's nightmare. As soon as I walked in and my eyes adjusted to being darker, I saw her at the bottom of the stairs. I ran over and she looked like her color wasn't good. Emily can be heard in this frantic 911 call. She's still unconscious? Yes. Yeah, I don't know if she's breathing anymore. She continued breathing. I did CPR with the 911 operator until the EMTs got there. 
Hours later at the hospital, Anna's panicked mom had the races in to devastating news. Doctor sat down and she said, Anna didn't make it. That's when I was like, what? And I like fell down off my chair. In the ER, the heartbroken mom sees something no parent should ever witness. Anna, she was, I could remember how she was laying. Her head was like this way. And she had a tube in her mouth and she had a bruise on her forehead. And she wouldn't wake up. So I don't know. I only got to spend like five minutes. I should have spent longer, but she wasn't there, obviously. The next day, an autopsy and shock. The injuries are consistent with a fall, but results show something much more sinister happened here. This wasn't a toddler's innocent tumble down the stairs. Something very horrible happened to this little girl. Coming up, Emily DeFreeze is on the hot seat. Police force her to answer the tough questions, but she shocks the cops pointing the finger at the one person you would never suspect. I know that there is someone in that house other than myself who is capable of causing each and every one of those injuries. 